Lou is here for episode number three of the Lou Living Life podcast. Uh, today, it's it's a new one for me. We're actually interviewing somebody that I don't know personally. Um, and, you know, I think he's also a person that's important to speak to because he offers a unique view uh, for men, uh, not only men self-help, but development and techniques. And I want to introduce you is another Luis, Luis Miguel Matos. Luis to Luis. Luis to Luis. Nice, <laughs> nice to, to meet you. Finally meet you, brother. Super you know, happy we, to we be here. We had a little conversation off uh, off camera, kind of introducing, you know, who I am, who he is. And I'll be honest, I, I've been kind of going through the notes you sent me. Uh, I went into your Instagram. You know, I kind of did that, that whole thing. You know, I nice. Think if I'm going to be in the industry, might as well. Um, and I find it interesting what you're trying to do. So I kind of wanted to hear from you. What exactly is your mission? Wow, that's a great question, man. Um, my mission is to um, is to basically be of um, service and be an example to uh, us men and um, help help men in general to overcome anything that you know we're trying to overcome and uh, just just be a friend you know just be there for for us men and and guide them to and what what made you want to do this or even start doing it you know because when i was growing up I'm, I'm 33 now and when i was growing up um i used to feel i don't know that that no one understood me or i mm. felt uh you know alone let's just I, say I don't, i don't think you'd be the only one there but yeah you know just trying to figure life out and um you know it was tough for me growing up feeling different uh, I, i come from a small town in puerto rico called naguabo <clears throat> and um yeah just uh you know lots of things have happened in my life that made me you know like wake up i hit rock bottom you know and uh, it made me who i am and now i'm on this mission of you know uh, just Just because I found, and and um, how do you say? Um, now I know who I am for real. Yeah, you know. And now that I'm empowered, now I want to help people. Uh, do what I did, because I believe if I was able to do it, everybody, everybody's able to, you know, overcome whatever you're, you know, you're going through, or, you know, you could you could be sad right now. You could you could feel isolated. You could feel you know alone or depressed or whatever. But there's always how they say a uh, light at the end of the tunnel, you know. I I agree. Um, I agree because I've been through it as well. You know, maybe a little different. We have a little different path. Um, you know, my family we're a little more closed off, and I always say this. You know, we we don't have room for emotions in my family, and I, I think that's like a man thing too. Mm -hmm. um, but when exactly did you you know kind of have that awakening moment of you know this is me, and you know it doesn't matter what opinions or What's going on? These these are my values. I stick yeah. to this. Like, when did that just like snap in for you? Yeah, it's a process, you know. It's a journey. Dang. But you know, I'll, I'll give you an example. At least for me, um, you know, I kind of went through a similar process. I moved a lot. You know, I was born mm -hmm. in Cuba, lived in South Africa for a couple of years. Mm -hmm. We escaped. You know, like typical Cuban. I went through it all, um, and I think throughout that tr those transition periods, I never really had friends. Mm -hmm. You know, and I got bullied a lot growing up. Mm -hmm. So I, I grew up a lot of resentment, you know. People mm -hmm. would call me angry and stuff. Mm -hmm. And it was more because, you know, I'm a very hyperactive person since Same. the day I was born. Same. And when you don't feel you can make a connection like that, you you harbor this real anger. Mm -hmm. And for me, it kind of clicked in after I started my professional work career. You know, I wasn't really being consistent, still being sloppy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then around 24, 25, you know, something just clicked and said, you know what, why am I not actually trying? You know, instead of just wondering why I feel this way, you know, why every day feels purposeless, I said, you know what, I'm going to stick to one thing and I'm going to try. Yeah. And it just clicked for me. Yeah. Like that. Because for me, it's as simple as just do whatever makes you happy, you know? Okay. And um, that's, that's what I've been doing. Um, I used to care too much of what people thought about me mm -hmm. and that's you know the way uh they they raise me you know of course our parents they try you know their best uh with what they had um but you know coming from a small town everybody you know is talking about everybody everybody's on you know on everybody's mm. business you know thank god i didn't have to go through that you know so i, I went through that you know <clears throat> 
And um, yeah, until you stop caring, you know, <laughs> and you just do whatever makes you happy. You just follow your passions. And uh, one thing that um, I know a lot of people go through is some people don't, don't think they can. They can't achieve those things. You know, you start believing that story inside of you that you're not capable. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, you start lying to yourself. Oh, I'm not into that. Oh, I don't want that. I don't want to do that. But that's not true. Like, you really want to do it, but you're too scared to go for it, you know? Sometimes. And, yeah, I stop caring, man. I'm just I'm just doing things that make that's me good, happy. That's good, man. I, I, um, hopefully, you didn't stop caring, you know, to the yeah. sense of, you know... Um, and and we're not going to be for everybody. You know, that's something that I had to, you know, learn the hard way. That's true. Because I really want to, you know, everybody love me or whatever. But, like, it wasn't until I learned that I, I'm the only one that needs to accept myself for who I am, then everything changed. I'm, I'm happy to go through that. You know, for me, I'll be honest, um, part of the reason I'm even doing this podcast is George knows it very well. You know, I'm a very outgoing person until I'm home. When I'm in my little home, I'm like, you know, I don't want to deal with anybody. I don't want to talk, talk to anybody. So I like these podcasts because it gives me an opportunity to open up and, you know, maybe be a little more uh, open to discussion and uh, perspectives because I am dead set in my personality, you know. Kind of like, like what you're saying, I know who I am. So it's very hard to then convince me of certain things, you know, and that's why this is important, mm -hmm. you know, so. Because we're all learning from each other. Correct. And, you know, part of what I wanted to talk, I, I really, I really think it's interesting. Um, <clears throat> you know, the topics you sent me, like, like this, that sacred masculine, you know, m in other words, the men should step up their game. What do you mean by that? Exactly. I feel, and it's not our fault, you know, I feel that um, these are not uh, topics that they teach, you know, when we're growing up. Like, it's just basic stuff. Um, they don't teach us, you know, teach us to be, you know, re real men, in my opinion. I feel that us as men, um, we have to, we have to, one of the main things that I believe in is you have to be of service. Okay, I and, agree. You know, uh, you're basically the the rock, the support, you know. And what's a real man to you? Because that, that's, that's more <laughs> of a, even, I would say, a controversial topic nowadays. Yeah. Um, you know. Any mention of what a woman is, what a man is, automatically kind of like mm, puts you into this bubble where you get this wave of people already hating on you before they even heard what you have to say. Mm -hmm. You know, so. And I, that's I, something you got to have tough, you know, tough skin, how they say. I <laughs> agree. Like, so what is, what does a, a real man mean to you then? Um, a man that provides, that gives uh, stability, support. Uh, a good man is uh, cal you calm your wife's or your partner's uh, nervous system. Um, you are of service to different men or to society in general. You lead by example. You um, you try to be the best you can every day. You um, you do all these things. You meditate. You journal. You work on yourself. Um, you express your emotions. That's one thing that us as men were not, let's just say, allowed to do. You know. But let me ask you a question, and this is this is one of the you know topics that, that I think is a little harder for me, at least, you know, to to be able to discuss it like that. I'm not a very emotional person in the sense of opening up my feelings. You know, and so I, I always wonder, is that a societal thing or do you believe that's a bi biological thing or a combination? It could be a combination, in my opinion. Everybody's different, you know. Everybody express, you know, their, their emotions in a different way. I've always considered my uh, my myself um, very emotional, let's just say. You know, um, as I keep, you know, getting, growing up, getting older, you know, you start to calm yourself down and try, try to uh, cope you know, with your emotions, try to, instead of like pushing them down and not feeling them, you know, feel your emotions, you know, they're going to pass by. They're just, they're visitors, you know, they're just saying, mm. that. you know what I mean? I'm not trying to hold on to those emotions and yeah. How would you, rec how would you recommend for men, you know, that are kind of going through that, you know, 
How, how do I get that monkey off my back that's bothering me? First of me, all, you, know? you gotta feel, <laughs> true. You have to feel your emotions, man. I used to, you know, some people, we do all these things, you know, we drink, we binge watch a lot of shows, trying to, you know, not to think about our problems, mm. uh, addictions, pornography, alcohol, drugs, what, drugs, whatever, you know? But in my opinion, um, you have to you have to feel your emotions with empathy, you know, and compassion towards yourself. Uh, we need to stop judging judging ourselves, and just have a lot of empathy and compassion towards yourself, and you know, take it day by day. Not every day is going to be you know, a, let's just say a great day, but at least we we learn, you know. And like I said, it's a process. So as long as we keep moving forward. We're good. I, I kind of agree with that. Um, you know, with moving forward, every every day kind of ha setting a goal. Yeah. You know, for me, like like I said, how do I get that little monkey on my back? You know, it's almost like, and George knows this. Uh, it's like a like a game of suffering. You know, where if I work out or I set myself up for you know a very hard day at work, or You know, even when I'm I'm already fed up, you know, having a million problems and, you know, I have my kids, they start crying and this and that, you know, that for me is how I get the monkey off the back. You know, can I set up myself in a position that's that's so hard that I know whether I accomplish it or at least I got close to it, man, I tried, you know, and I think for me, at least that's something men should should try to do every day. Mm -hmm. because if not, we have that little guilty little thing in the back. And I, I don't know if it's a man thing or a woman thing or about, at least for me. Mm -hmm. And I've seen this through a lot of men. Mm -hmm. Men without purpose are men that feel like nothing is worth anything. Mm -hmm. And so this is my advice, at least for men, try and do something hard every day. Mm -hmm. Whether you're accomplished or not, because man, at least you're gonna. By the end of the day, you can have your, your tuchela, mm -hmm. you got your little smoke, whatever you yeah, want to do. Of course, and, and, everything's and then at the, balanced. At the end of the day, you feel good, you know. So that's why, at least, I I think I'm with you, hundred percent, hundred percent. And I think that's why sometimes I disagree with people that want to share more of their emotions because I'm not good at that, mm -hmm. you know. And then doing these things, it's what kind of gets me emotional. Yeah. You know, that, that's how I'm like, I get it out. You know? <laughs> yeah. um, and I don't know if, if if that's something society is supporting today. And I don't see it. You know? Me neither, man. I see it like it's being demonized. I see it like it's being uh, made, made a target. And, yeah. you know, not only is it wrong, mm -hmm. we don't, because men are not, you know, we don't feel useful anymore. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, you're, you're, you're debilitating yourself. Mm-hmm. A society without strong men is a society without defense. Absolutely. Anybody can come in here and take us over any day they want. Mm -hmm. You know, um, but that's my two cents, you know, on that. I'm with you 100%, brother. And, you Lewis know, to Lewis. Lewis to Lewis. <laughs> and uh, switching off to something else even more, I, I found it curious that, that you said we need to get rid of toxic men. Well, what exactly does that mean? Hmm. And I used to be like that, you know. Like, in my opinion, uh, I know it's a, it's a strong word, you know, and uh, this is not coming from, a, from you know, I'm not judging anybody, you know, because I used to be like that, too, you know. But for me, it's someone that it's, you know, a man that's, you know, blame, blaming everybody but himself, for, you know, mm. for his, you know, situation, let's just say. Um, you're not looking, you're not looking to um, improve yourself to, you know, do things better. You're just blaming everybody. You're playing, you know, that victim mentality where you think it's everybody, you know, else's fault, but you're yours. Um, you know, you're not, you're not doing what you're supposed to do. You're not taking care of your woman. Um, you, you're not there for her. You know, you're not supporting, um, you're not being of service. Uh, you're basically out of, out of sabotaging yourself because um, you're not even eating right, exercising, in my opinion, mm -hmm. you know, doing all those things that you're supposed to do to be a better man in general. I also think that the term itself um, has kind of become like a buzzword, you know, especially with like 
toxic masculinity, that buzzword, toxic mm-hmm. masculinity, where it feels like it's become this thing of, well, if I disagree with you or, you know, you're saying something that I don't like to hear, you know, I'm going to call you a misogynist, mm-hmm. yeah. a toxic a toxic masculinity. Yeah. And I always say when, when you start throwing buzzwords or slurs or whatever, you kind of, you stop conversing. You no longer want to have a conversation. Now I just want to prove that you're right and everything else doesn't matter. Um, and I feel like that's that's where we lose ourselves, you know. We no longer want to have conversations, you know. You disagree on one point from me, I no longer want to talk to you. Insane, in you my know? opinion. <laughs> so that's why I, I, I like that you define toxic men as exactly what it should be. You know, people that are, you know, just Not taking responsibility, be accountability. Correct. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I think that's part of the problem. But I also see, and I, I, this is where, for me, it's always, like, interesting. I also see both sides, you know, and this is important. Do you feel like men are also becoming toxic because their roles have changed? All of a sudden, mm-hmm. women are more in a position of power. Women are more of a position of influence. And men that feel they can't please a woman or live up to their potential. It happens to me with my wife. You know, I, I, I say my wife works here with me. My wife taught me how to work. She you taught know? me a lot. She taught me how to work. You know, and I've been in this ride. And sometimes if I feel like I'm not doing enough, it feels like you're falling short. And so I, I also wonder, have more men became become toxic simply as, as culture, as, you know, society is changing? You know, where we feel like, all right, what the hell do we do now? You know, what do you want us to do now? Yeah. Men blame women, women blame men. You know, mm-hmm. there's this battle going on insane. And in my opinion, you know, when we're together, we're stronger, you know? A hundred percent. And, um, you know, we need them as much as they need us, you know? It's like a perfect combo, in my opinion. Perfect dance. She teaches me things. I teach, you know, teach her things. And that's the most beautiful thing, in my opinion. So for everyone who doesn't know who he's looking at, you know, is, is she your wife? Yeah, that's okay, my wife. your wife in the corner. Yeah. That's my daddy. <laughs> We're going to have her on later yeah. uh, in a couple of weeks. You know, some people are like, who the hell is he watching in the corner, you know? <laughs> but yeah, man, I, I mean, I'm, 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 I think we're in agreement for most of these topics. Um, I think it's all about, you know, I, I like your, your, your mission because I think it's, it's definitely something we need more of right now. Thank you. Um, and I think if we don't handle it the right way, we're just going to get pissed off men. And piss off men usually leads to wars, mm-hmm. you know. Absolutely. Look what's going on right now. So you know, um, so I'm I'm happy you're doing it. But and I wanted to ask, other than just you know your overall message, what are you doing to reach men or be able to get these people you know informed and and you know? Yeah, I'm trying my best to you know create content uh, when it comes to these things. Um, I've been doing this you know for the past I don't know five six years i'd say a uh, link in the description right george all right yeah thank you make thank sure you. you hit that link in the description yeah and i really love what you're doing too man this is amazing and um yeah i feel that whenever i get a chance uh one word that comes to mind is authenticity you know just just being who i am you know and whenever i get the opportunity i just share you know my my beliefs without you know worrying about what they're gonna think or whatever i used to but not anymore um do you have kids not yet not yet not yet oh, yeah goodness. we want to though you know you know when when people tell you oh wait till you have kids you're gonna change and that it's so true um it's a hundred percent true i actually think and i think this is maybe the men that, that have kids will understand me when you have a kid and you don't have those toxic male male traits that you speak about um I think your mission even becomes even stronger because I like, all right, it's not just me being, you know, self accountable certain hours of the day. It's all day until like nine something, 10 at night where I can hide away and, oh man, finally, you know, and you know, you're a direct product of their success and you're a direct product, you know, of what they're going to do. You know, they're always watching you. My song is, it's impossible for me to get away from it. The oldest. And the middle one's starting too, and the little one's also, you know, I have three kids already. Wow. 
you know so i i think that's also having a especially a son you know cuz little girls for me i have a little girl for me and it, i i feel more like as a bear like protecting as opposed to my sons where i'm like i refuse to i refuse to see the weakness in you you need to be better you know so i really think that that's going to help you so if you guys ever when you do have a kid you know, you, i i think that will help you out that's going to be a great face you know one of the things yeah. i didn't want to talk to you actually and and get your opinion on this cuz i've always wondered you know puerto ricans i always say uh Cubans are a little bit jealous of Puerto Ricans. I'll tell you why. Because I always feel we're super similar. Like no, I Cubans agree. And Puerto Ricans. I agree. Food, but I, music. I always say, man, if the U.S. were just you know inhabited us, man, the potential. Yeah. You know, not like it is now, where it's like you know we're screwed, no matter what. But Cubans are always a little jealous of Puerto Ricans in that sense. You know, so how how does it feel growing up Puerto Rican? You know, in the sense of your culture, and as a U.S. citizen. How does yeah. that feel? It's funny. Um, yeah, it's a great question. To be honest, I didn't realize until until I met her how how blessed you know I am. First of all, I want to say, man, that we're all equal. You know, like um, this. Can I? I don't want to curse. Yeah, you can curse. <laughs> yeah. I don't care. No matter. Such bullshit to me, man. Mm -hmm. Like. Oh, are you a US, U.S. citizen? Oh, you're not a U.S. citizen. Oh, I'm sorry, man. Just this piece of paper is going to... You, now you're a U.S. citizen. You know what I mean? Um, but it's 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 definitely a, a blessing. I didn't realize how how hard a lot of, you know, Hispanic people have it right now. You know, just because they don't have that opportunity to be, you know, a U.S. citizen. Mm-hmm. And um, me growing up as a Puerto Rican, um, I've always, uh, you know, felt connected to the U.S. Of course, it's part, we're part of the U.S. Um, but yeah, Puerto Rico, even though it's part of the United States, it has its own, you know, we have our own culture. Mm -hmm. You know, we're super similar, like, you know, Cubans. We Tercero. Yeah. <laughs> See, you know. <laughs> we have, que es la que hay ustedes, mm -hmm. you have your, your own. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, the reason why I asked you that, that in particular about the Puerto Rican thing, not only because, again, I think Cubans are jealous uh, in that regard, uh, but also of what's going on in this country right now with immigration. And, you know, I, I, I want to go more in as what do you mean of uh, that being a U.S. citizen means something or not in that sense. So, first of all, I want to say that it doesn't mean, like, I know it means a lot, you know, because okay. of the world we live in. But I was just, uh, you know, making fun of the fact that it's just a piece of paper that says that you're you're this, you know? Gotcha. Yeah. But I, I know the importance, you know, of, of people wait years, you know, just to to become a citizen and have all these opportunities, you know, because... The truth is, this country gives you a lot of opportunities if you're really looking for them, you know? A hundred percent. You know? And, and, you know... And a lot of people sacrifice their lives just to come here, man. Crossing that border or doing, you know, whatever. Starving kids. Cruzando the frontera. Cruzando I mean, frontera. I, I did that. You did it? Yeah. Wow, man. That was one of the things we had to do. Wow, man. Respect. Um, and that's, that's why I always, I always feel like I'm sitting in the middle in a sense, you know, because people look at me, they hear me speak and they're like, oh, white American guaranteed, hmm. you know? And then when I tell my story, I start speaking Spanish. You're like, okay, this guy's Cuban. So what the hell are you? Yeah. You know? And so I understand both perspectives in the sense of, I feel like to a certain degree, people who are born in the U S no longer feel that pride of being an American. And the immigrants coming in are the ones that start building that pride. It's crazy. Like, you know, I I I tell this all the time to anybody I speak. I am I'm an American that was born in Cuba. Mm -hmm. I'm not a Cuban American. Mm -hmm. It's two different things. You know, because I'm so happy that my 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 kids were born here. That's why I say we're jealous of Puerto Ricans. You can become president. I can't. Yeah. 
You know, so even if we got here early, like my brother, he got here at four years old. He's basically American. Mm -hmm. We don't have that. Yeah, we have this deep, deep pride in protecting this country because we understand that it just doesn't exist like this anywhere else in the world. Whether you disagree with the politics, you know, whatever's going on societal, you know, the privileges, the rights that we are afforded in this country don't exist anywhere else exactly like this. Where we have this crazy mix. It's okay to, you know, fight, yell at each other. Yeah, do whatever you want. You know, it's freaking crazy. You know, and I feel like nowadays immigrants for the most part, especially the ones that have been here for a long time, that have can really sacrificed to make something of themselves, feel deeper pride than just regular Americans. And that just trips me out. I don't yeah. understand it. Yeah. I get it in a way. You know, you're trying so hard to achieve something and then you become that. And, and then it's just like this, you know, their greatest achievement, you know. And, and, and do you think that's just because I go back to the beginning, uh, it's just afforded to you right from birth? Or do you feel like that's just something, well, you know, we understand the right, but we have to keep working to make it better. Like, where does that come from? Um. Meaning that that I was born uh, being a U.S. citizen, correct? Yeah, yeah. That I, like that loss of pride, like I'm saying, of, of the yeah. U.S. When I came to the U.S., I remember it was like you couldn't mess with white Americans. Those oh, yeah. guys are powerful. You know, those are big yeah, guys. They'll mess you up. Yeah. And now I'm like, no, we don't care. We're just speaking Spanish are, in front of them. Like, yeah, it, yeah. it's not that. You know, yeah. I, don't, I don't, I don't agree with that. Yeah. Yeah. You know, my son is one of the only few kids that speak Spanish in the school Amazing. because I only speak Spanish to him. And so if I'm American, I was to say, I would be like, bro, relax. I'm on your side. But I also don't want him to be dumb. You know, I know how to speak Spanish. Yeah. You know, knowing him, both is speak a great advantage. Like speaking both Spanish and English. I agree. But I, but I mean more like American men, and I, I have a couple of American friends. They, they feel like they need to shut up nowadays more than ever, and they can't even speak. Yeah. You know, I know. and I, I really wonder what, made that phenomenon and maybe it's you know what i'm saying it's like well if i'm born rich well if i'm born here then i i don't really appreciate it as much yeah. as if damn i had to work to get this you it's know it's true and I, i'm even gonna go here I, this is only you know i feel that some some puerto ricans take it for granted too i feel you know they have this opportunity to do this and i respect that too you know some people don't want to live here and i i respect that too you know but it's just, um, it's very ironic in my opinion that there's a lot of people trying to, you know, crossing borders, like doing all these things. And, you know, there's some people that don't care. That's, that's how what, life is, you know? That, that's why the immigration issue is always a touchy one for me. Cause yeah, I for me too. For I understand me too. Americans, you know, in the sense of like, man, we don't want a bunch of people here in the sense of, is there actual, like a good process right now being done as to uh, we want to filter these people who's coming in who shouldn't be here and at the same time like man like i always say is i could have been in cuba complaining about communism not having shit and here i am you know and and, and what we consider still in my opinion the greatest country in the world you know with the rights it affords you you know who am i to deny those people coming in here that opportunity it's exactly. tough it's super tough you know, um, and these people are willing to put in the work, you know, do all these things. And it's just, I mean, prime example. Yeah, exactly. Bro. You I know? was going to say, look, at you, you know, prime example. And I don't know what to do about it. I, I really do have obviously opinions, but I, I feel like, man, the opinions right now are so controversial. It's crazy. I mean, any, yeah. any, any side you kind of yeah. really dig into too much, you know, it, automatically just people won't hit, listen yeah. to you anymore. That's why I, I started saying that we're, we're all human beings, man. We're all the same in my opinion, man. It's all about opportunity and access and in a lot of ways too. And I, and I say that. That's why, man, we're in the U.S. Get to work, guys. Get yep. up. Yep. You know, make a plan and, and, and do something. You have that right here. Yep. You don't like your president? You can say bad stuff to him on Twitter, you know? <laughs> <laughs> True. You know, I don't know if you're on Twitter or not, but man, Twitter is crazy. I always say, you know, Twitter right now reminds me of when I grew up playing video games. I, I grew up playing World of Warcraft a lot. Uh-huh. And it just it was just filled with trolls. I was a troll, yeah. you know? And that's what Twitter is right now. It's just troll central. And 
in a weird way, I always wonder, oh, you know, what do we want in our society? Do you, we want trolls? Mm-hmm. Like a society where, you know, we have free speech, anybody can say anything, and obviously you're going to have people, you know, that just live to get other people pissed off. That's what a troll is, right? Or we have the opposite, like, you know, we've gotten so sentimental that we don't want to be offending each other to a certain point that, okay, now if I am even saying something critical, being critical and demeaning you are two different things. Exactly. When I'm being critical, I'm, I'm coming from a, a position of care and, you know, I want to help you. I, I honestly think you're doing this wrong. This is my suggestion, you know, as demeaning where I'm just making fun of you. Exactly. I don't want to help you out. Exactly. You know, and and that's, I think, I think as in, in America, we can have both. It doesn't exist. No. Nope. We're either run by trolls mm-hmm. or we're run by, by people who suppress you. What do you want? Exactly. You know, so it's like, man, that, that's, where, that's where it gets crazy. Yeah. You know? To be honest, that's why, I, in my opinion, too, like I became who I am, too, because you see all these people making fun of each other, you know, the trolls and whatever. Like, what if, what about us, you know, the people that really want to do something, you know, but I feel that some people are just too afraid to speak up. That's, that's why, like, I decided to change my life, too, because I'm like, look at this. Like, what are they saying? They're not even making any sense. Like, I should go for it. A hundred percent. You know? A hundred percent. And plus, we, we only live once. I, 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 you know, I don't know how you lived in Puerto Rico, um, but I wanted to talk a little more about that. Do, people usually think that Puerto Rico, just because it's a territory, for the most part, you're living in just like the U.S., like the first world country. What is Puerto Rico? I mean, I've been there on vacation, but it's different when you live there. You know, I can yeah. safely say Cuba is a third yeah. world country. It's a, yeah. it's a crap hole. Yeah. You know? What is Puerto Rico exactly? Is it first, second, third? What do you what do you consider it? I mean, I'd say it's it's first, uh, you know, world. Okay. Because um, whatever's here is over there too. Basically, it's the same thing. Okay. But all the signs are in Spanish. Mm. You know, instead of stubby spare, you know, like stuff like that. But um, it's basically as if you're living here, but everybody speaks Spanish. That's the only thing. I'd say, um, but um, there's, like I said, there's a, we're very similar when it comes to our culture and when it comes to, you know, music, um, I'd say that it, that's where we're super different from the United States. For example, uh, back in the eighties, you know, we used to, you know, salsa was super uh, popular. Now it's reggaeton. You know, no, I mean, Puerto Rico is dominating the Latin world right now. It's, yeah, it's, it's the truth. Yeah, you know, Bad Bunny is he is who he is, man. He's yeah, he just knows how to get it done, you know. Yeah, you know, and I I think not only are we alike, you know, we we identify with each other because it's a similar setting. Our you accents know. are basically the same, basically. very I mean, similar, yeah, very similar, yeah, except some Cubans are more Russian. <laughs> now, here, here's what I said, I'll say about that the other day. I had a discussion um, with one of my jiu-jitsu partners, and he's like, oh, where are you from? Oh, I'm Cuban. I was born in Cuba. And he's like, really? Bro, you look American white. And I was like, no, I'm, I'm a real Cuban. You know, I wasn't, I was born there. He's like, what the, f- the hell are you talking about? What do you mean? You know, you're white as hell. Like, what do you mean by that? Bro, what I mean by Cubans being Russians is you see the ignorance of these white ass Cubans with chains up to the neck, four or five chains. You know, I had a parent, one of the other parents, I'm not gonna say who he is, but one of the other parents of the kids, he's one of those guys. White as hell. You know, the other day he came dressing all white at La Santeria, La Sacosa, uh-huh. and with chains everywhere. The dude parks in a handicap with a handicap sticker. Dude's not handicapped. Oh my god. And bro. I'm like and I'm like, this is the most backwards ignorant <laughs> shit, you know, and and this is a white guy. But he's just ignorant. You're a Russian, basically, you know. I don't know. Russians don't get insulted by me. You know what I'm saying, bro. <laughs> like, I'm Pacino. Like, you know, like, yep, you're, yep, yep. you're just so ignorant. You don't yep, know any yep. better. In you Puerto know? Rico, we call them hibaros. Yeah. Like, it exists as well? Yeah. They're freaking crazy people? Yep. Okay. Yep, right. yep. So we do have a lot of yep. Yeah. Yep, yep. That's what I'm saying. It's crazy, man. Crazy. So any, anything else that you want to touch on um, in particular to, you know, how do you think we'll be able to get men kind of back um, I don't want to say in position of power, but a position of self-power. 
you know, we're we're back at a, a balance. I feel like the, the, the scales have tipped. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I think women are better at executive jobs and offices. I will say this right away. And I have evidence from this. Back when I started 11 years ago as an agent, I think the market was like 50-50. Now my industry, and we're talking about health insurance, is dominated by women. The directors are women. The administrators are women. The doctors are women. The nurses are women. The agents are women. The salespeople are women. I mean, we're talking about like my company at least, and I think we're like 80% plus women. Wow. So, you know, I think just right away with that, I can so your say company's doing want, well. Right? Yeah. You're <laughs> telling me your company's doing amazing. It's doing good. And, and, and women are really dominating. And I think it's because they have something to prove more than anything. And when we're in a field where it's more accommodating for them, oh, they'll kill us. They're smart. So and then especially in that emotional sense, especially in that, you know, getting things done stuff. They carry a lot of wisdom. They always approach things in a different way, ways, you know, that we, we don't see for some reason. <laughs> so then I go back to how do we fix it so men can start feeling in empower themselves again how do, how do we go about fixing that great question we start we have to start believing in ourselves more man um let's start off from that um we have to support each other more and do these things what we're doing right now just being vulnerable you know not being afraid afraid of being vulnerable there's nothing wrong with that that's how you make connections that's what makes us humans you know mm-hmm. and I feel that if us as men, uh, we supported each other a little bit more, we would start to heal. We, you know, men will start the healing journey if if we support each other more. Stop, you know, making fun of each other or or judging each other, and just let's just respect, you know, our points of views. Um, and yeah. Well, number one, I congratulate you. And number two, I um, give you good luck because <laughs> at the current state of affairs and everything's going, it just, it, it seems not an impossibility, um, but a really, really big mountain. You know, it feels like to get there, you know, it, it's going to take something we can all stand behind. And that's, that's like, that's what I kind of feel like we don't have right now. Like, who do we fall in line yeah. You know, because just, when we're constantly bickering and we're disagreeing, yeah. usually something or someone can get us, you know, into that common ground. Like, where do we start that common ground? Yeah. It's just that I feel there's a lot of distractions nowadays. And I feel, for example, like, this is what I used to do, you know, like, uh, I used to think that meditation, you know, was that it didn't work. Okay. I've, I've tried it. To me, it just, I see too many dark things and I'm like, you know what, man, I'm, I'm done here. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> yeah. And, and then that was me too, you know? Um, same thing with journaling, you know, just writing whatever you want to write. You know, there's no one reading those words but yourself. Well, from one man to another, I'll pick him up. That's what <laughs> I'm here to do. Help yeah. him out. Pick a brother up. No, I, I think, I think the biggest thing with journaling, I, I've never tried it. Um, but I think obviously the purpose is to be able to face ourselves truly every day. And like I said, I mean, I have a hard time with that because, you know, I, I did go through a bunch of stuff growing up, the bullying, not having friends, you know, kind of moving everywhere. You know, you never reestablish everything. So every time I have to face that guy, I'd rather just, you know, run 15 miles, mm-hmm. work out for three hours, yeah, you know, do MMA fight. Yeah. Um, then, then to really get myself in that deep and, and then, I don't know, for me, I start questioning myself too much. And so I kind of drop back into a little turtle, yeah. you know, yeah. Where I'm like, you know, I'm okay here. I know, I know how to do this stuff. You know, I'd rather, I'd rather have somebody punch me in the face than to face you know, that guy, yeah. that guy in the dark, yeah. you know? Yeah. And, you know, that's why, so that's why I'm, I'm glad you're, you know. Yeah. I remember what I was trying to say. I'm sorry. No, go ahead. Um, go ahead. No, no, yeah, that I used to like play video games and stuff like that, you know, um, Things that um guys, we do not give drugs or alcohol here. Okay, we're a clean, <laughs> we're a clean production. I swear, I swear, I swear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Just uh, too many video games and too many, too much distractions, in my opinion. And um, 
And um, like I like I was saying earlier, they don't teach us to do these things, you know, the things that we're supposed to do. We don't. It's as if, um, you know, whenever someone talks about meditation, they're like, oh, I don't like that. I don't like that shit. I don't want to do it. I don't feel like it. No. Or, you know, or doing something that you know deep down that's going to make you better. But still, you know, still we don't do it. Because I, I think it's more identity as a nation. And I really do think that we don't have a clear identity. You know, we're all, all over the freaking place. And so how do you expect for our kids to learn the right things if we don't know what the hell we should be teaching or learning? You know, so I, I kind of go back to the, I want to say, I don't want to get this wrong, uh, but during Kennedy's um, presidency, I don't know if it was in the 70s, 60s, I want to be right. Um, but if you look at this, the guidelines for schools, you know, as far as exercising, testing, uh, you know, it was stringent. You know, both men and women were in extreme shape. You had to do real exercise. You had to get real scores. And, you know, I feel like when you start doing that, yeah, the 60s, okay. When you start doing it, you you develop an identity. Mm -hmm. You develop mm -hmm. this, this confidence. You know, right now we have so much access, like you said, not only to video games, people are addicted to porn left and right. Mm -hmm. And I feel like all these men who have lost their purpose mm -hmm. are turning to that because it's, mm -hmm. it's a quick hit, mm -hmm. you know? Okay, mm -hmm. I feel better, you know, yep. for a couple for a couple yep. minutes. Yep. But then that monkey's going to get right back in uh, your back. Exactly. And you're going to feel like crap, yep. you know, again, because you don't have purpose. I've been there. It doesn't help, you know? Man, I'm I, okay, I'll be honest, guys. I'm trying to, okay? Uh, <laughs> Self-help. This is a real thing. Yeah, I know. Of course. Thank you, you for know, sharing. Men, men are real. Um, yeah. and it's a real thing. Uh, it's even, not easy. Even it's not if you easy. Have a wife. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. I know. Uh, I used but to... I, I think is that, and for me, I, more than anything, I think it's part of the Cuban culture. Mm. You know, Cuban men, you know, like we're taught to be, oh, yeah. hey, well, so, yeah, you know, of course. So that. Like it's that culture of you got to be like, you have to have a girl. So, you know, that's, that's that culture, you know, and I, I think, it leads to that that behavior of you know being addicted to porn, um, you know, doing debaucherous things, you know, pulling up you know with a handicap. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that, that, that did make me laugh, man. The and I fingers, know the true fingers, huh? The true fingers. No, this guy's off to something else. <laughs> That's I know this is to it's a tough topic. I know you know, but music too, man. I feel I feel the music is. It's gotten out of hand, man. Um, all these songs, sexualizing women, as if you know they're just a piece of, you know, carne, you know, meat, you know. But it's because people are not are, are not calling on their their stuff. Number one, and number two, they keep consuming the stuff because if you justify something, even if it's wrong, with money and merit, you're gonna have people replicate it. Mm -hmm. You know, and and that's what's going on, like part of you're saying we need strong men to kind of guide us again and that creates the next phenomenon which is the 45th you know mr donald j trump where now you have this huge polarizing figure you know that a lot of men identify not because maybe he's not uh, like the best choice for them like it wouldn't be their their first but man at least this guy is saying stuff that we wish we could say Mm -hmm. And we try to say nobody wants to listen, mm -hmm. you know, and when we get to that point, I don't even know what the hell's going on. I, I mean, I've been here this country in 2001, you know, I, I don't want to fight my countrymen, but at the same time, I don't want to allow what's going on to just keep going on at, Me neither, at a further man. pace. Me neither. We definitely need a uh, new leadership, man. Well, by the way it looks, it's going to be Trump, not against Biden. I don't think it's going to be Biden. I really don't think so. Hopefully not. Huh? So then that tells me that you're for that side, at least, you know, for, for, and that's okay. And that's what I say. You know, the funny thing is, you know, in 2016, the first time I ever voted, and maybe it's going to, you know, make me lose some Republicans' friends. It is what it is. I voted Democrat. It's okay. You know? I voted. I voted for Hillary. Yes, guys, I voted for Hillary. <laughs> no, okay. no, the first time. The first time. You know why? I'm going out. You know why? I'll I'll I'll, I'll explain why. It's okay. I bro. was 25, 
I was still out of college. I really think Democrats pull more the younger people because it's just what we're supposed to do, you know. And I also think the Democrat Party has changed so much within the last eight to twelve years that it's like, what the hell is this? This is mm-hmm. not what we thought it was. Mm-hmm. Where we're supposed to be, you know, like people who just wanted freedom, people who wanted to be left alone. And now it's like, no, 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 you don't get to be left alone because this is what's right and we prescribed it. What are we talking about? Exactly. And Republicans were supposed to be like war hungry and, you know, the same thing we're talking about. You need to shut up because we know better for you are now being like, wait, what the hell is going on? Why are we being oppressed? Why can't we talk? Why can't we do this? So now it's like, what the hell? What's going on? Have you heard them talk? Like, it's like, what are you saying? It, It just feels like people who are out of touch with reality and that's what I, one of the things that I, I try and teach my son you know I've I've done well in business my family has done well in business but who cares we came from nothing you know my son actually funny enough today uh, he said dad I need ten dollars I was like what do you need ten dollars for oh I want to buy some Gatorade and like a, like a little thing for my friends I'm like well, what Oh, why? Who? And he's like, he's good. He's he, like, that's not ten dollars. He's like, Kim Puerta, that's nothing to you. He's like, yeah. Mm-hmm. Or you just give me a hundred, ten dollars, no mucho. Do have mucho más que cien dollars. I'm like, wait, wait, wait. Give me a second. Just because I have a lot more than a hundred dollars doesn't mean I don't value a hundred dollars. Absolutely. Okay. You know, for a lot of people, hundred dollars, even ten dollars, means something. It means an hour of their of their day, whole days of work. You know, it's something they're they're battling to get. The value. So just because you can get it doesn't mean that you can depreciate it. It still holds its value. You need to be respectful. So respectfully, you ain't going to get no $10. <laughs> <laughs> you okay. know, and, and, and that's what I'm trying to teach my kids as well, you know, just it, so this doesn't occur. I feel like the Democrats have gotten so much power that now they're out of touch with the reality, out of touch with their base. Out of touch with the real people who actually care, which are, for the most part, rational people. They're just looking out for themselves. Correct. And instead, they have lined themselves with, like, the, some of the craziest people you can think of. People you can think, you see, like, okay, there's something wrong with this person. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. You know? And, and let's put an age limit, too, man. Like, some of these people are, what, 80-something or whatever. No, not only do I think there should be a necessary age limit, I also think at least tests or something, you know. Yeah, a hundred percent. I mean, that, I think that's a no brainer. I mean, yeah, but they don't do them because they're in power, and yeah. you know, it's part of the hypocrisy that I see in anything big, even corporations. When you get so big, I don't care what you have to say; I can just replace you and just keep moving. You know, and. That's where I see these people kind of high standing, and we don't care to talk to our base anymore. You're gonna swallow whoever candidate we give you. Now, at least the Republicans this year they they've held primaries, even though everybody knows it's gonna be Trump. Where are the primaries for Democrats? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Robert Kennedy didn't even get a chance. I know, man. And and you know what the funny thing is, Robert Kennedy is probably the best choice for the Democrats because not only would you bring in Democrats base automatically. You also get a large chunk of Republicans that are like, damn, this guy is 60-something. Look how many push-ups he can do. Mm-hmm. Damn, this guy makes sense. Mm-hmm. Damn, this guy yep. wants to do it. I'm like, what the hell is going on? He made a lot of sense. Um, you know, but it, but it's so true, man. It's, it's yeah. you know, I, I feel like if they would have put Robert Kennedy, maybe they would have had a chance. Yep. You know. You, but you see, that didn't happen for some reason. That didn't happen. And you know? there's no primaries. Mm-hmm. How does that make sense? Exactly. Where's the democracy? Exactly my point, bro. You know, so that's where, you know, that's where it gets tricky now. So I, I really do ask this. This is more of a question for you because seeing as I definitely, you know, by the state of affairs, even though I voted in 2016 for, for Hillary Clinton, in 2020, I voted for Trump. Obviously, we lost. Mm-hmm. You know, it got it got crazy. It got freaking crazy. That, mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, most of that stuff shouldn't have happened. Yeah, I know. Uh, I really think it happened out of passion more than anything. Yeah. Nothing from a, a, a bad part, but it's it's so awful. Yeah. So I, I really think in these elections, Republicans are we already know what the hell's gonna happen. Who's gonna be voted in for that? Yeah. 
what does a Democrat that definitely is more towards the middle, what the heck do you guys do? So true. It's like, there's no, oh my God, I'm going to say like, there's no good options in general, you know? So it's like, that's why some people don't even, I'm not saying that's the, the right choice, but some people don't even vote, you know? Um, you know, I, I used to think that the younger I was, I was like, ah, politics is stupid. Only yeah. only older people talk about politics. It's like, it's not that interesting. And then as a parent, somebody who now pays taxes and has business, yeah. I understand there's real, yeah. there's real consequences to politics. Super. You know, so not only from an economic standpoint, but social wise, you know, uh, there, there's just everything that can, that yeah. can shift mm -hmm. in literally four years. Mm hmm you know, so I, I really say that there's going to be a very interesting election. I think Democrats have a bigger burden than Republicans this time around. You know, and the rumors are it's going to be Michelle Obama mm -hmm. or Gavin Newsom, which I still have a problem with. And I'll, I'll tell you why. Not necessarily maybe Michelle Obama. You know, she's a lawyer and her husband was also president. Whether or not he was great, that's arguably for some other discussion. Mm-hmm. But Gavin Newsom, being a vice president, I have a tattoo of San Francisco in my back. I went to San Francisco, no joke, in 2015, and me and my wife fell in love with that city so much wow. that we both got matching tattoos. Wow, that's how beautiful it is. And now you go to California. It is riddled with homeless, drug addicts, crime. I mean, we see it all the time. And it's Gavin Newsom. And the funny th thing is, he doesn't talk about it. He's a very slick talker. You can tell he, he's good at deflecting. You know, and how can you consciously, in a way, vote somebody like that? You're like, man, that guy destroyed that place. And mm -hmm. now he gets to do it with, you know, or at least have a lot of say in how it gets rang now. It's like, I don't know. How accurate is this? You know what I mean. How how accurate is it? You know, is this like that? That those just, are the those are the rumors. Um, you know? those are the rumors that's going to happen because I, I mean, I I think even Democrats will see us at the rate that it's going. If Biden runs again, he's going to lose. Yeah, he's going to lose. He's going to lose, and you know, you guys will have Trump. You mm -hmm. have to deal with Trump, which basically the way I see Trump is the trolls will be out again. Yeah, yeah. You know, people yeah. will just start being yeah. mean again, yeah. making yeah. fun in a weird way, man. I. I I love watching highlights of it's Trump. It's fantastic. Dude, he's the funniest <laughs> guy, bro. I know. I, I've seen, I've, I've popped so many of, of, I literally, like when I'm bored, just do this. Even if you hate him or not, you don't like him, whatever. Put Trump the big highlights. <laughs> I do it too, bro. Dude, the, the comebacks <laughs> and the insults, they're, yeah. they're freaking hilarious. Yeah, yeah. Let me tell you something. Yeah. Bro. And I think where the problem is, is like people like, yo, our president should not be having these kind of conversations with other political leaders. But I also think in a weird way, it works. And the guy just kind of humiliates world leaders and they're like, is he really doing this? <laughs> yep. Is he really? He's the only one that can, you know? And I think he does it almost as he's learned to do it as his methodology. Okay, I'll insult this person, lower them, show them I'm big, and then behind tables be like, look, man, I just want to like chill. You know, it it's like be. slapping him in the front and then in the back because, I mean, it only makes sense. Tougher rating or whatever. You know, yeah. he slaps him in the front. You got they blast people in the front and the back. Like, you know, I had to do that, right? But really, I just want to chill. You know, I, it's not going to repeat again if we have an accord. You agree with me? And I, th I really think that's what he does. That makes sense. It's like a strategy for that him. That makes you sense. Know? But then again, you have, to, you have to deal with trolls, you know? Yeah. Yep. That's what's going to happen. Yep. And that's what sells too, so. So, oh, but, it is. but I kind of wrap. I, I want to wrap this up. Is a, we went through some stuff there. Yep, yep. That's good. We I, did, I, man. I like it, you know, um, because I really feel like as the more of the podcast comes out, I really be able to be myself more. Um, you know, just because I have these uh, opinions doesn't mean I'm a hundred percent defined. I'm not hearing people out. I want. I I told George, please bring me the most opposite person to me, mm -hmm. and bring me a self loather, mm -hmm. bring me a person who believes, you know, like uh, that everything I say is wrong, because I want to have a real debate. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's the beauty of it, you know. That's the beauty, and I, I really do thank you for coming on and you know shedding some light on a problem that I truly believe is real. You know, that's why I I'm doing everything in my power to make sure I raise masculine men. 
men who are not only masculine in, phys- in physique, but self-accountability, uh, support for their family as well. I tell my wife this, by the time you're, you know, 50, 60, you have three soldiers around you. Beautiful, man. You know, and, and that's really what I I also want for men in America. You know, because I, I feel like if men in America can be men again and proud of their country, you know, not only for America, you know, but more for men, we live here, our people live here. I think, you know, we can kind of ride the ship again. So, again, with that said, I want to wrap this episode up. Um, thank you so much for Remake and Matos for coming thank on. Thank you, man. Thank you, Louis. Uh, Louis to Louis, bro. Louis to Louis. <laughs> I'm leaving um, the desc- in the description his links to his Instagram, any programs that, that he might have, and uh, any questions that you guys have. Or if you are a man and you're having problems with, you know, uh, self-improvement, uh, depression, please let us know. We're here to help. You're not alone. You're not alone. Correct. All right, guys. Thank See you. See you next time. See you.